So, hey, folks, this is Vincent Schilling. I am host and moderator for this discussion on the upcoming Peacock TV television series, Rutherford Falls. Are you jealous? You should be, because I'm excited. <laughs> so with us is today is the awesome executive producer and writer, Sierra Teller Onelis, who is Navajo and Mexican-American. The awesome actor, Ed Helms, who's an awesome actor. Believe me, especially in this show, he's he's brilliant. The awesome actor, Michael Gray. Yes, I'm using awesome a, a lot on purpose, who is Nihaya Muskeg Lake Cree. And the awesome actress, Jana Schmeeting, who is Cheyenne River Lakota. So... Uh, you know, first of all, I, I just have to say how fantastic this show is. And I uh, got to see four episodes already as a journalist. And once again, if you're watching this and you haven't seen them yet, yes, you should be envious because the show is spectacular. But let that excite you to go see it because it's brilliant. So welcome, guys. I'm so I'm so excited to, to have you all here in the Zoom channel, in the whatever we call it these days, because everyone's doing it. <laughs> Thank you. So glad to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. So glad. Absolutely. So, so um, Sierra, let's, let's ask you first, you know, this show is about, you know, the two characters, Ed and Jenna Play, Nathan Rutherford and Regan Wells. And the show's description even says, you know, these are friends who find themselves at a crossroads, quite literally, when their sleepy small town in the Northeast and a Native American reservation that it borders are turned upside down when a local legend and the town's namesake, Nathan Rutherford, fights the moving of the historical statue who becomes known fondly as Big Larry. So, all right, so um, what... What is what what got this going? What got these juices flowing to create the show? Because this falls on that sense of, you know, tear all the statues down, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, we just came from that. And now this this is here and, and you guys are all involved in this incredible, amazing, awesome, fantastic project. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sierra Teller Ornalis. I'm born, I'm Edgewater born for the Mexican people. Um, thank you so much for having me here today. This is such an honor. Um, yeah, no. Um, so I, I've been working in television for about 10 years as a writer and um, had always really wanted to make a, a native show and um, had this idea sort of for like a native anthology series. And I had left a job and was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do and develop. And, and years previous to that, um, kind of flashing back, um, Mike and Schur, creator of Parks and Rec and The Good Place, um, had worked on The Office with the lovely Ed Helms and they had formed this really incredible bond while on the show. And I feel like we always say like the character of Andy Bernard was really crafted in many ways by, by Mike Schur. And so, so they ran into each other at the Universal lot, I believe, right? And um, yeah, and um, decided to kind of start working together on on a character, and they kind of came up with this Nathan Rutherford character, and they had all these sort of ideas of what they wanted to talk about and, and sort of the things that were happening in the world. And this was prior to a lot of the current issues with statues. I know within Native communities, statue issues have always been around, um, but but so they um, they started collaborating on on this character in this sort of world and they realized that there was going to be a large native american component to the story and they are spoiler alert not native american and um through happenstance both <laughs> i had worked on brooklyn 99 previously right. with nature for a year and then i'd also developed a pilot with ed's company and with ed and so um my name sort of got uh pitched and they were like oh we've definitely worked with her before we'd love to work with her again and so mm -hmm. We started meeting and it was really just a really wonderful like meeting of minds. I had worked for many years um, at the National Museum of the American Indian at the Smithsonian and had a real museum background. My mom is a master Navajo tapestry weaver and she um, kind of raised us in museums. And so we sort of kind of mind melded the three of us together and just sort of kept developing the idea. Um, and this sort of became, you know, instead of a couple of native characters, what if there were a bunch of native characters? And what if we kind of started crafting this world? And and yeah, then we were off to the races. And we're off to the races. And we're here now at this incredible show that's coming in. And speaking of this melding of the minds, speaking of this interactions between you and Ed and Mike, I actually have kind of a clip of this meeting of minds that, that I will... Uh, 
talk about just for a moment. I don't know. Maybe you guys remember. That. <laughs> <laughs> this is not so, so before, <laughs> right. So, so before we talk about this, we have to bring in Jenna and Mike. I don't know if you guys know the answers because there's two. I asked. I I, I asked, extracted this a little bit from the video, and and they asked. You know, this was a uh, part of uh, Peacock's variety show that they were having, and Ed and Mike asked them. Do, do you guys know the answers that? Sierra gave to these questions, Michael, Jenna? No. Okay, okay. Not so so the question you have to ask yourself before we move forward is, does Jenna like adults in bouncy houses or does she like scuba diving? So you got to answer these questions to yourself. Now, does Sierra my, like it? Yeah, right. Correct. Thank you, Ed. Yes, yes. correct. Thank you. Good <laughs> distinction. And my <laughs> answers were, yes, of course, to both. Right. So what are, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Yes or no? Did you say yes? Did you say yes, 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 no, or no, yes, or no, no? <laughs> Wait, what was the second one? Uh, bouncy houses and if she would scuba dive. Yes, adults, no. adults in bouncy houses and if she would scuba dive. Yes, no. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All this right. is hard. Ed, what do you got? Yeah, this is a tricky one. Being an adult in a bouncy castle is just unquestionably awesome. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go with yes. Now you're making me rethink my answer, but I, I said, no, I'll go with no Sierra. Do you like adults in bouncy castles? I think that's the grossest thing I could ever think of. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say Sierra does not like scuba diving. I also said Sierra does not like scuba diving. Sierra, do you like scuba diving? To walk among the fish? Yeah. I like scuba diving. Are you out of your mind? Like deep down and so walk among the fish. I'm just saying to do the things, it's like going to space, except you get to stay home and you don't have to like be really good and be an astronaut. Any mook can go into the ocean and scuba dive. Have you, no, have you done true. it before? That's you do true. have to take an extensive training. Wait, I'm, yeah, you take, have you met some scuba divers? I'm just saying, I know, I have a lot of uncles that could scuba dive. They couldn't go into space. Uh. <laughs> that's too their net is forever <laughs> what's embarrassing is i'm wearing the same dress so now america knows that I'm uh, <laughs> i just love and I, I i think i said it in that video but it makes me laugh so hard that you think of scuba diving as walking among the fish i mean it is the it, it, there's no walking involved in scuba diving <laughs> But on the, the sea I, floor. I, yeah, okay. All if right. it's one of those old if that's one of those old ones with like the big Yeah, the big brass to... helmet. Yeah, like in a fish tank. That those the, yeah, they, the they walk among in. the fish. That counts. I'll You're right. Awesome. That's all I know. Uh, okay. So all right. So great. So so let's, you know, I figure let's let's be so we can spark off some of this fun that we're having. You know, let's watch the trailer. Four hundred years ago, my patriarchal ancestor, Lawrence Rutherford, founded our town. Anyone see the resemblance? I definitely see it. (laughs) It's in the jaw, the shoulders, the chest, and probably some other places. Okay. Thank you. I am the steward of my family's legacy. That will resonate throughout history. And you have a museum. You're going to get yours, too. This is a ginormous casino. But nobody wants to help my cultural center. The only native artifacts in here are those bags. <laughs> you seem smart. I'm guessing lots of college. Not Ivy League. But so close it drives you crazy. Northwestern. Nathan, I'm calling to request a response to Mayor Chisenhall's decision to move Big Larry. I'm sorry, what? The problem is not Big Larry. It's the road. <laughs> This is the fifth time someone's crashed into that statue. It's a public safety issue. It's history, Deirdre. You can't change history unless you have a time machine. And you don't, because if you did, you'd go back and tell yourself not to buy that blazer. <laughs> what? I'm gonna get this town on my side. Yes. And I'm gonna transform my cultural center. <laughs> This town has forgotten how to honor their ancestors. Can we focus on the problems that are actually important? Big Larry's important. More important than the opioid crisis. Apples and oranges, Carla. There's something happening in that town. This is a story about stories. Damn, the podcasting voice is very manipulative. (laughs) (laughs) So much drama. But let's uh, leave them all Okay, more. no, but I'm not done telling these people why they're wrong and stupid. 
This is why it's not worth being friends with white people. No. That is just brilliant. <laughs> just cut awesome. that together. Some, someone's got to give that person a pot of gold. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> so good. And and the part one of the parts that resonates with me, and we'll we'll start talking about your characters right now, is the part one of the parts that resonates with me is is when I what's the lady Carla says, what about the opioid crisis? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> as a native person, I swear, I can't ever hold on to an issue because there's always something that's more important. Like as if we can't care about more than issue, more than one issue at a time. And I'm like, hey, how come Ed gets to see apples and oranges? <laughs> or Nathan Rutherford rather, but. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so the first, the first person we'll start to talk about is, is let's talk about Ed, what you're doing, you know, and let's talk about Nathan Rutherford, you know, and you know, one thing I want to ask you is, is in addition to my compliment on how well of a job you did and how much you are just owning, you are crushing it, Ed, crushing it as Nathan Rutherford, crushing it. All of you are crushing it. But how does it feel, you know, because for me as a native man, as a, as a Mohawk kid growing up literally on Compton Boulevard in California, the only thing I knew was Felipe Rose of the Village, but it's the only Indian I ever even heard of. You know what I'm saying? And now you're part of something in 2021 alongside these incredible native actors, along, working with sierra and th this large native writers room you are part of a woke movement that is acknowledging the existence of native people and telling this native narrative and you are, are standing right alongside us joining arms i mean how does that feel because to me to see it i i literally at one point was laughing and five seconds later am burning hot tears down my face to some of these things so how does that feel? Because it's exciting for me. I am uh, overwhelmed to hear you say all of that. And, and uh, I, you know, candidly, I'm still learning about the, um, the impact that a show like this has in the native community and how much it's resonating. And I'm, uh, I'm at the more I learn, um, the more proud and grateful I am to be a part of something like this. It's truly uh, overwhelming. And, and I can say out even outside of that context, just this is some of the most this show uh, has been w one of the most rewarding creative experiences of my life. Um, and not just because it's felt like, uh, you know, it's it's felt meaningful in a way that m so many other things I've done maybe haven't, uh, but also because just the um, the creative energy on this show, uh, the the kindness and benevolence of everyone who works on this show, uh, the entire writing staff, our entire cast, everyone just found this dynamic that I've never experienced before. This is not my first rodeo. I've been in a lot of stuff and I've had a lot of fun. I've been incredibly lucky to be a part of some amazing things. And this experience, um, for so many reasons, it is incredibly special. Mm. That's wonderful. Well, uh, the fact that you're doing this and representing in this way is incredibly special to me. And I can tell you, and I know, uh, because at this point, with all of us talking, I'm the only outsider essentially watching something that has been created that you have all created and are part of this creative process. And I'm, I'm the first recipient essentially to view it. And what I'm telling you is it is a gift it is a gift. It is a gift to so many. It is a gift to the Native community because we're seeing ourselves representative. And it is a gift to every non-Native community because they're seeing us represented. And and it is just incredible. And I profoundly thank you for that, Ed. I really do. Because you are changing people's lives, perspectives, and, and, um, and, and so much, you know. 
it's it's incredible. I really mean that. So thank you. I, I, and first of many. Like I think I'm so excited that we're you know one of the first shows um, where Native people are so prominent, not just in front of the camera but behind the camera. But we have Reservation Dogs. We have this Marvel show coming. We have you know hopefully Sovereign. Like I feel like it's a really breakthrough moment right now for Native people in television, especially. And I would also just shout out Ed because I think um, he's a very humble person. But there's so I mean I feel like we've all gotten calls from you know, non-native um, media makers who say like, the script's done, we just love for you to read it and sign off on it or add a couple of details. And and Mike and Ed really did invite, you know, my voice and the voice of many others to the table early in the process. And that was what was so wonderful about this was just, you know, having such a large native um, writer's room, having, you know, me there from the beginning, it just, it's really been, I think, part of the process. I, I'm just eternally grateful for. Uh -huh. Completely. All right. So what I'm going to do now is 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 just so Michael and Jenna knows you're, you're next. But out of that trailer, I just want you guys to be prepared for what you're going to see as things come up, as as the trailers release, as people watch the show, as people will be doing, you know, uh, screen grabs and gifs, etc. I just want you to be prepared. So I pre-made some. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get an idea of what it's going to be like. Oh. So here we go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. What? I'm sorry. 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 Damn. 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 This is why it's not worth being friends with white people. No. This is why it's not worth being friends with white people. No. This is why it's not worth being friends with white people. Okay, so I just I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of heads up of what you're probably gonna be seeing. The the yesh, the the Sean Connery version of Jenna saying yesh, yesh, yesh. Uh, you just wait, Vincent. There are there are some things in later episodes that will that are eminently giveable. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. I, I am so excited. I, I, I just know well I, I I the one scene where I don't know what you're wearing, a pilgrim's outfit or something. <laughs> I was like, oh, God, I don't know what's going to happen with that one. But, you know, <laughs> the one where uh, on the phone where I say, I'm sorry, what? The, <laughs> yeah. I think we, we did a whole bunch of takes of that. And I think every time I leaned further and further over, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Well, I'm telling you right now, when people watch this, they're like, yeah, I'm grabbing that. I'm grabbing that. So you, you'll see it soon. I'm telling you, I'm going to grab all those. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's too funny. So, all right. So, hey, so guys, so let's talk about you, Jana. Uh, you know, a um, a veritable newcomer, a veritable freshman, a veritable brand new actress on the scene who is also crushing it. I would <laughs> never have known in a million years. I would have thought, well, she's been doing this for a while. She is, uh, you know, a seasoned uh, acting veteran because it's it's you're freaking hilarious and you're just walking through there like you own it alongside everyone else. So uh, tell us about your character and how is this experience for you? Um, yeah, well, uh, Regan is, um, uh, you know, a, a young professional who uh, has two master's degrees and um, returns from getting those masters to her, um, you know, tribal community and uh, to set up shop uh as uh you know she has her own cultural center it's at the back of a casino <laughs> yeah that and, funny part where mike is all you must drive you crazy and you're like <laughs> yeah that that hit a lot of uh, hit a hit a nerve on the uh, on twitter <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Northwesterners out, actually, oh, out I there. would imagine. <laughs> Feel uh, type way Northwestern is the Cornell of, of our show. There we go. Um, but yeah, she, uh, Regan's like a very eager character. She really wants to, you know, please her community and serve her community. But uh, the way she goes about it is um, uh, kind of naive. You know, she, she has mm -hmm. to... She gets uh, kind of coached by Terry, uh, played by Michael. Mm -hmm. um, she uh, he kind of teaches her how to connect with the community on a on a uh, 
deeper level so that, uh, you know, they claim her and, uh, can, she can build some uh, a rapport, a trust with her mm -hmm. folks. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and she's best friends with uh, Nathan. They are like childhood besties and they have a, a great friendship and um, their friendship is, is uh, sort of um, where we see the manifestations of this, um, this sort of uh, sh narrative shift that's happening um, in their town. So um, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And it was a, a wonderful experience for me. I mean, mm -hmm. I got to work with like two uh, like film and television legends. Yeah. <laughs> I got to learn how to write to TV from like three people who like I couldn't. It, it's been an absolute dream. I, mm -hmm. I I don't know. I don't know how I scored the dream, but mm -hmm. I'm very thankful. Thank you, creator. I mm -hmm. say it every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this has been so much fun. <laughs> have you have you worked hard in your career? Has there been times where you're working and like everyone else is like, yeah, let's go out, and you're all, and you're like, oh, I wish I could do, but I'm working, I'm working this and okay. So that is called I, I working for, for your oh. success and earning it and deserving every bit of what you've got. There you go. That's Thank what it's called. Thank you. Yeah. That's yes. what it's called. That's how. <laughs> I did a uh, live comedy for, you know, over 10 years in New York City. And I was a, a you know, I was a public school teacher by day. Uh, and and some yeah. of the interactions with you and Michael's character are just classic. So on that note, let's talk about your character, Michael. Um, you know, uh, this is Michael Gray. As of course, as you folks know, I've interviewed uh, uh, several times who, who portrays the character Terry Thomas who is the head of the casino. It's called Running Thunder Casino. And uh, this is your essentially your first foray into the world of comedy. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm How's a, that for you? I'm a newt. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a baby uh, walking amongst um, comedy superstars. So I remember actually during the audition, I, I, I came into the room and I was like, okay, I think they know me from like very different kinds of shows and very different kinds of materials. Um, but what was so great is that there were, there were moments where um, Terry is sort of a, like a badass. And I'm like, okay, I've played a badass before. So I know how to do that. <laughs> so the, the writing is so brilliant um, that I, and, and of course I'm working opposite really brilliant actors. So um you know, the comedy thing got put aside for me because we're all working at the same thing. I love actors, I love our craft. And uh, I was like, I was almost stunned out of my like direction I was going when, when people in the room laughed. Like I was like, <laughs> oh, they laughed. Mm -hmm. So this is very new to me. This is super new to me, but um, I love it. Terry is, such a fantastic character. He's a truth teller. He's like, I, I would like to grow up to be Terry. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, somebody asks him something and he goes, no. Like he's <laughs> no all the time. <laughs> like we're to. Like we're, oh sure, I, I, I'll help you move up those flat of stairs. <laughs> Never. <laughs> so yeah. I love that. And he's he's got that um that native uncle vibe. Uh, mm -hmm. sort of like he's he's wise beyond his years and you know he's been he's been in tough jams um you know and he's worked his way out of him like like all the uncles have and and the aunties uh so i love playing him and um i remember i was talking with ed one day on on the set and ed goes like man we're we're lucky dudes <laughs> and i mm -hmm. i was like yeah i love the set I love the people I work with. Um, I would drive on the highway in LA. I'd be like beaming because I was so happy to come to work. And I was like, I'm just going to meet all these beautiful people, this beautiful crew. And um, and then I'd laugh like through the day uh, because it was so much fun to play. And then I'd go home and I'd learn my lines and the next morning on the highway, grinning like a fool. So it's been an extraordinary extraordinary journey for me yeah that's exciting and well you know see in addition to my stint as uh 
you know, Indian Country Today, arts and entertainment guy, associate there, blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I went to college for, for broadcast, but I was also a theater arts major. And some of the exciting, yeah, hey, some of the exciting thing about theater arts and, and learning about comedy, you know, I studied the greats. I studied Moliere. I studied, you know, all of these really wild, uh, you know, people who, from Stanislavski to so-and-so this and so-and-so that to Chekhov and, and, and comedy, what in my experience have always found is absolute complete 100% sincerity. Whatever you're doing is absolutely true. I believe it 1 million percent and nothing can detract me from that feeling. So if you follow that thread that I have found always sitting there and just being completely dead serious about what you're saying, no matter how outrageous it is, that's where the humor lies. The humor lies in the sincerity of what you're saying. So, you know, which is why, you know, uh, what stuck out to me was was Jana's tweet because I was I was thinking, you know, uh, and by the way, if you look at this tweet, who is she retweeting? Me. <laughs> 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 she retweeted because I because the the amazing folks at Peacock TV reached out to Indian Country Day and said, "Hey, we have the photos. You want to show?" I was like, "Yes, yes, please, God." <laughs> So, uh, you know, that, that's one of those like, journalist things. You get an exclusive. It's pretty awesome. So we sh- got to share the photos. But I had shared the, the, the cast photos and the poster art. And she says, comedy rules dictate that when you have a character who appears this hopeful and confident, you simply must put hurdles and pitfalls in her path. Yes, absolutely. So what do you think some of these pitfalls and hurdles, hurdles are going to be for you? <laughs> um well regan has plenty of hurdles um i i'll say one of my personal current hurdles is that there's a leaf blower outside (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) oh i thought it was mine (laughs) no it's mine uh but uh yeah regan like i mean she just like she jumps into life uh you know she jumps in and uh, she is very thoughtful and compassionate. Um, and she, but she, she sort of like has this confidence of like, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna like take charge of my life. I'm gonna go for it. And we know as uh, people who are, uh, exist in native communities, like you gotta cut your teeth. You gotta prove yourself. <laughs> you, you really do. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, <laughs> Uh, and and the the funny thing is 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 you know we'll we'll is uh, ask just a little tiny bit more and we'll we'll before we move on to the our our next life's endeavors. Uh, but Ed, the 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 question I have for you before we head out is what more trouble is your character going to get into trying to either stick up for the people around him that are really kind of questionable because as we know that one scene where you're you know in the cabin i can't really say (laughs) (laughs) which was so it is in the scene where you're like the guy throws the shoe at you you know so you have that and then you have you know you're trying to stick up for people and this and that so uh well i mean nathan is um his own worst enemy throughout the whole series he just he wants to do the right thing he wants to be uh loved by everyone but he maybe wants that a little too much and uh and he kind of loses i think loses sight of the big picture um he loses a little bit of his own compass and uh you know without getting into specifics um we will see nathan uh get shoes thrown at him uh we will see nathan (laughs) uh um help me out here guys there's uh i think yeah i think there's like a fun thing to this where it's it's sort of like this one event kind of creates all these ripples and each character in the show is sort of changed forever so as one person is sort of getting in their own way others are getting opportunities others are seeing the opportunities and others aren't and and i think what i love so much about this show is that like on any given sunday any of these characters could be the protagonist could be the main character you know yeah yeah Yeah. that's a beauty of this show beautifully and, done and one moment someone is the hero and one moment they're someone else's adversary you know so so we kind of life is just so messy 
<laughs> and I, what I like about the show is, you know, in in the second episode, Harry has a line, Michael has a line that says, you know, nobody likes a complicated story. <laughs> and I think that, you know, that people just want a clean, easy way to understand things. And yeah. especially with Native people, that's just not possible because yeah. there's just so much complications to, to our histories and to where we come from. And I think watching all these characters kind of grapple with that messiness is just kind of, um, it's fun to watch and it's a comedy and yeah, I'm just, we're just so excited for people to see it. Uh, on that note, that, that, I think that pretty much sums everything up. It's exciting. I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, four episodes was not enough. I'm like, I'm <laughs> jonesing already and I'm like going, oh my gosh, how long am I have to wait? But that's okay. It's exciting. Um, but I just want to say thank you to the four of you and make sure to say thank you to the other, st you know, the other cast and crew, the writers, you know, Jesse, who's doing an amazing job, Dustin, who's doing an amazing job, Bobby, everybody on this is just incredible. So please tell them from Vincent, Nawangoa Mohawk for thank you. And I just think Sierra, Jenna, Michael, Ed, you guys are incredible and, and you are just guiding this ship to new harbors, man. It's incredible, incredible stuff. And, and, and I... I'm just incredibly grateful for you and profoundly excited ab about where this project's going to go. The very last question before we head out, the very last one, and I even wrote it down to make sure I got it right. <clears throat> what is the best type of cleaning rag for the Emmys this show will get? <laughs> I'm just going to give you my mom's personal home phone number and you can call her because I agree with that. <laughs> I, mean, uh, let me ask you, I like that vintage chili. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Vincent. Yes. Your Thank words you mean so much. So much. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> make sure all of you are following me on Twitter. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you guys. I, I really do appreciate you all so much. And I, I think what you're doing is amazing. I really do mean that. And, uh, in the words of Stan Lee, Excelsior. Well, let's see where we go with this thing because it's just going to blow up continuously. I'm, I'm telling you, it's amazing. You thank guys you are so awesome. Much. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank All right, you. folks. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this has been uh, a, a great time to talk about the things that are coming in this new show, Rutherford Falls on Peacock TV, which premieres April 22nd. Make sure and check it out. Thanks so much. I'm Vincent Schilling. Talk to you soon. <laughs>